good evening all welcome to the new session we will try to see tumor mimics in M msk so this is an interesting topic i have taken a, a these topic uh, based on the journal so i have been busy with uh, my family commitments and personal commitments and even traveling and conferences so i was not able to upload the video a while i am very thankful to all my subscribers followers students and my teachers and mentors uh, because of uh, their uh, constant support uh, i have been awarded unsung hero in radiology uh, that is radiology awards 2023 uh, given by jcs seminars uk so i have been uh, given in the category of unsung hero in radiology um, so thank you all coming to the tumor like condition so tumor mimics uh, so this is the journal which i have taken so based on this journal i have uh, compiled this video so you can pause the slide and see the, all the common lesions which can mimic bone tumors that can be normal variants or congenital developmental abnormalities trauma or androgenic lesions metabolic disease and arthritic changes infection and technical artifacts these can mimic tumors so coming to the first one that is the normal variants that is normal red bone marrow in an adult here you can see this is the normal red bone marrow here you can see this is the normal red red marrow in the proximal humerals which is low which is low on t1 weighted images which is showing low signal on t1 weighted images and which is uh, showing high signal on uh, fat suppressed pd pd sequences this is nothing but the normal red mar red marrow in an in an ad adult and this can be observed bilaterally and without epiphyseal involvement so here you can see in the infant it is completely red marrow but in childhood gradually there is yellow marrow in the center which will extend uh, cranially and caudally in the adult sense there will be predominantly two thirds or three fourths of the bone is filled by yellow marrow and only red marrow is at the level of uh, proximal shaft uh, of the proximal shaft and even adult in greater than 25 hours it is completely replaced by yellow marrow so only normally red bone marrow is present in adults at the level of proximal one third of the uh, shaft and also in the metadiaphyseal region sparing the epiphysis so this is nothing but normal red red bone marrow which should not be confused with any other tumor or edema next what is bone marrow reconversion reconversion so in elderly mare sometimes the yellow marrow this is nothing but the yellow marrow can be replaced by red marrow so this red marrow is nothing but typically shows low signal intensity on t1 weighted images heterogeneously hyper intense signal on t2 weighted images and 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 fat suppress sequences or nothing but uh, fat suppression images it will not show any edema so this is bone marrow reconversion which can be seen in elderly and also in some hematopoietic disorders this is also other case where you can see bone marrow reconversion here you can see this is the hypointense areas on t1 and even heterogeneously hyperintense areas on t2 but following radiation therapy you can see there is complete reversion of the red marrow into yellow marrow so that's why this is normal signal has been reverted back so this red marrow is completely converted into yellow marrow uh, after radiation therapy so what is this bone marrow reconversion what are the conditions in which the bone marrow reconversion occurs these can be physiological that is cigarette smoking obesity high endurance athletes or high altitude sometimes iatrogenic in post granulocyte colony stimulating factor treatment post erythropoietin treatment pathological can be seen in anemia sickle cell diseases chronic anemia cases like sickle cell disease thalassemia or hereditary spirocytosis even diabetes mellitus and chronic respiratory diseases next here also you can see there is a, a lucent area in the humeral head which is normally there is decreased or devoid of trabeculae and with increased fat component this is normally seen in superlateral aspect of humeral head which is nothing but called humeral pseudocyst so this humeral pseudocyst should not be confused in with any other tumor and sometimes internal rotation of the humerus can also show a lucent pseudo lesion with pseudo sclerotic borders this is seen on internal rotation but on external rotation you can see the lesion is completely disappeared so that's why it is called as humeral pseudo lesion so both humeral pseudo cyst and humeral pseudo lesions can mimic tumors they should not be confused with tumors and they can, should not be misdiagnosed as tumors next here you can see these are the normal variants here also you can see there is a triangular lucent area noted in the femoral neck at the junction of compressive and tensile trabeculae this is called as ward triangle this is called as ward triangle so and another lucent area also noted in the calcaneum this is the other lucent area noted in the calcaneum 
you can see this is other lucent area noted within the calcaneum which is also de devoid of trabecula or decrease in the bone trabeculae which can mimic simple bone cyst gct or chondroblastoma or introsseous lipoma but here you can also see the other case of introsseous lipoma which can be differentiated from this uh, calcaneal pseudocyst by presence of central calcified nidus which is nothing but central dystrophic calcification due to fat necrosis which is nothing but called cockade sign so uh, lucent area noted in the femoral neck that is ward triangle and also calcaneal pseudocyst this cysts should not be these are normal uh, cysts uh, normal lucent areas which should not be confused with uh, gcts sbc or chondroblastomas next uh, sometimes uh, there will be anatomical variants or congenital and developmental abnormalities here you can see there is a lucent area with sclerotic rim noted in the um, uh, noted in the superlateral aspect of femoral neck which is hyperintense on t1 and hyperintense on t2 and fat suppressed images which is nothing but called synovial herniation pit in proximal femur and also there will be this is also you can see there is a uh, osseous process arising from the intermedial aspect of distal humerus on uh, ultrasound you can see typically the there is struthers ligament that is ligament hyperintense ligament of struthers which is attached to it this is nothing but the supracondylar process of humerus the struthers ligament is nothing but which attaches from the supracondylar process of the humerus to the medial humeral epicondyle so this is normal variants these should not be confused with tumors next here also you can see the solial line the solial line is nothing but here you can see uh, in the proximal tibia and also in the proximal fibula you can see there is a linear cortical thickening this is the linear cortical thickening here also you can see there is a linear cortical thickening which is nothing but the attachment of soleus muscle so this can mimic uh, periostitis from a tumor infection or stress fracture so this should not be confused with pathology this is nothing but a solial line or a bony thug lesion which is seen at the in the form of at the tibial attachment and also in the fibular attachment which is nothing but the solial muscle attachment next also there is some trauma and androgenic causes like stress fractures here you can see this is a stress fracture with adsen callus formation which can also mimic sometimes mimics tumors and also radiation changes so early radiation changes will cause vascular congestion and edema and decrease cellularity which causes low signal on t1 weighted images and high signal on t2 weighted images but chronic radiation changes there will be significant fatty marrow replacement that is so that's why the these bones are nothing but hyper intense on t1 and intermediate to hyper intense on t2 weighted images this is chronic radiation induced fatty marrow replacement and also even sub, sometimes subperiosteal hematoma this also can mimic osteodosteoma or osteochondroma like lesions so these are trauma or androgenic lesions which can mimic tumors next here also you can see there is a uh, lucent lesion with peripheral eccentric rim of calcification and central lucency and this lesion is typically separated by a cleft from the bone so this is nothing but typical myositis ossificans and that is myositis ossificans circumscripta here also you can see there is a lesion also noted in the vastus lateralis muscle with adsent edema and after two weeks you can see peripheral eccentric rim of calcification with central lucency and gradually after six weeks you can see zone of mineralization or mature bone formation around the lesion so th this myositis ossificans circumscripta can also mimic tumors sometimes but the typical location peripheral eccentric rim calcification and central lucency and separation of the lesion from the bone by cleft with history of previous history of trauma definitely think of myositis ossificans rather than tumors and sometimes even post hip replacement you can see there are lucent areas in the uh, acetabular aspect and also in the femoral aspect and also you can see there are multiple cystic cavities that sent to the uh, prosthesis this is nothing but particle disease these can also mimic sometimes tumor and also even metabolic disease and arthritis sometimes miller osteosis here you can see there is dense uh, sclerosis which is typically look uh, typically showing the candle wax appearance and also you can see this is a typical sclerosis al along the long bones which is showing the candle wax appearance this is miller osteosis sometimes this can mimic osteoid tumors that is tumors with osteoid matrix some some osteosarcomas but typical dermatomal distribution will help helps in differentiating miller osteosis from uh, bone tumors and sometimes even subchondral cysts even this you can see the subchondral lucent cyst and subchondral cyst, hyperintense cyst will also mimic gct but typical medial decrease in the medial joint space with subchondral edema and osteophyte formation along with subchondral cyst favor subchondral cysts or geodes rather than gct or abc or tumors next also metabolic diseases like here you can see these are brown tumors of hyperparathyroidism can also mimic uh, gct or abc next also sometimes infections like chronic osteomyelitis here you can see there is chronic osteomyelitis in the humerus which mimics ewing sarcoma and also broadis abscess can also mimic bone tumors 
and also sometimes the normal technical artifacts like this is you can see there is a lucent lesion in the uh, radio re, nothing but lateral radiograph elbow but this is nothing but disappeared on ap radiograph which is nothing but the radial tuberosity this radial tuberosity appears as a pseudo lesion and also sometimes the wrap around the rising mri here you can see the hand hand on the right side which is nothing but showing a wrap around artifact which is mimicking a focal lesion in the femoral head and sometimes even pulsation artifacts here you can see the pulsation artifact of a popliteal artery has uh, is nothing but mimicking a lesion in the fibula so these are technical artifacts so these are the normal uh, tumor mimics which should uh, know before uh, uh, so that we can prevent the misdiagnosis or overdiagnosis of these normal or physiological or uh, variants as tumors thank you all